And I'll mention now a few examples of extremely low friction. One we've already talked about, lubricated bearings. If you have a car or something else that has to bear weight, a lot of weight, and you need it to move efficiently, lubricated bearings are a great way to go. Um, another, another place where there's very low friction is in your body, in your joints. A ball and socket joint, for example, you typically have a bone that's shaped like this on the end, and it fits into another bone like this. Like This might be at your elbow, for example. Here's a, one part of your arm and the other part of your arm. And, and, and this part can rotate, so this is kind of like a hinge right here. This, this, this bone could rotate back and forth like that. Well, there's going to be friction right here between the two surfaces. Well, the tissues in here, uh, right in here in your joint, are very, very low friction, like on, on the same order of smoothness as lubricated bearings. They, they typically move very, very easily, and there's usually a membrane around your joint and there's some fluid in there and the membrane keeps the fluid in so it's a lubricated joint and it's very very smooth um, sometimes if you have an injury I remember having an ankle injury in high school and the the tissue right in here was was damaged some and when I would move my ankle I could kinda of feel it grinding a little bit didn't hurt real bad but you could tell something was wrong in there until it got well and when, once the tissues healed then it was normal again but joints that's an example of very very low friction Another example that you might be familiar with is an air hockey table. And the air hockey table, big rectangular surface. And there's a machine in there that blows air up through hundreds of little tiny holes in the surface. And so you you play the game, you know how it is, you try to knock the little puck into the other into the goal at the other end but it slides around with almost no friction and that's because the air hockey puck is sitting here on top of the table but it doesn't actually touch the table the air coming up through the holes causes it to float there on this tiny little layer of air between the puck and the table so when it slides it's only overcoming the air resistance, the movement of, of the puck through the air. It's not actually contacting the table, so you're not getting any kinetic friction between the puck and the table, just the air resistance. So it moves very, very freely and easily. And another example is a, what, a, what we call sometimes a maglev train, which is actually similar in some ways. By maglev, we mean magnetic levitation. This is a train with no wheels. They have one of these in Japan. On the tracks, the train that, well, the tracks are um, solid. Let me draw them. And then the train sits up here above the tracks. So we could draw some windows. And it's not really this high above. It's, um, it's actually a very small gap, but it does float above the tracks. And they do this with magnets. There are um, electromagnets down here in, in the train track. These are just magnets that are powered by electricity. And also magnets in the bottom of the train. Electrical. And you know how magnets work. You tick, touch them together and they stick together magnetically, but you turn them around and they tend to oppose. You turn one of them around, they tend to push apart. Well, they set up the magnets here in a way such that they're pushing against each other and that li lifts, the, lifts the train up off the track. That's why they call it magnetic levitation. And so the train floats above the track. You don't have kinetic friction of the train sliding across the track. You don't even have rolling friction with the wheels. All of that is completely gone. The only friction you have is the air resistance as the train moves through the air. So they, of course, want to have a streamlined shape so the train can move through the air effectively. But they've eliminated the rolling friction from the wheels. So that's obviously a case of very, very low friction. Here's a picture of a maglev train. Um, I think this is one in, in China, actually, at UCSMT on the front. I think that's Shanghai Maglev Train. And it looks a lot like a regular train, except obviously you see there are no wheels. And then, of course, the tracks, if you look, they look a little bit different than ordinary train tracks. 
And there's a picture of the interior, kind of cool, high-tech looking train.